And I'm also going to teach you one new variable called a Boolean variable. And I'm also going to teach you about comments because I haven't told you about comments yet. So let's go ahead and start with comments. Uh, whenever you want to write something uh, in, in your code in order to kind of explain to someone who's reading what your code is doing, you use something called a comment. So I could put two forward slashes here and be like, this is where the program starts. This is a comment. See how it's in green? This is not going to be processed by the C++. It's just going to throw it out and it's not going to do anything. You can use this in order to help explain to whoever's reading your code what is going on. It's, and you could even write little to-dos, you know, implement fire breathing or something. And then whenever you're reading back through the code again, you'll see this and be like, oh, I need to do this. So you'll write your fire breathing code or something like that. Comments are really good to use. It's a good practice to try to comment a lot of your code, especially for even yourself. If you write a whole bunch of code and you come back to it later and you, and you forgot to comment it, you may have to read through your code line by line to remember what it was doing again. If you write comments, you can make it much easier for you to understand what's going on in your code. If you want to have multi-line comments, instead of just doing something like this where we comment every line like that, what you can do is you can type uh, forward slash star and then uh, another star and then a forward slash at the end. And then anything in between these is going to be a comment. So you could, be, you could say something like made by Ben Arnold, uh, copyright 2014, this is McGee my game or something like that you could have a little header at the top that's a comment that's sort of explaining um, your code or, or something like that comments are a good practice make sure you use them especially if other people are going to be reading your code it, it's it's easy to forget to use comments but it can really bite you in the ass later on so let's go ahead and move on to our review of while loops and for loops and things and we're going to talk about a new variable called the boolean so first let's start with just for loops because for loops are pretty simple Remember, we use for loops when we want to count. And now a good practice whenever you're declaring your counter, because remember we need three things in here. We need a counter, condition, and then uh, a post condition, which is going to be what like our incrementing of our counter. We, we need to declare ourselves a variable, a counter first, and it's a good practice to declare it as int i. Everybody always does this when they're just using a generic counter. You always use int i. And then if you have subsequent loops that are uh, nested inside the other for loops like this, you use use int j for the next one, and then for the next one you use int k, and it just follows that pattern. You start at i, then you go to j, then you go to k. So it's just a good thing to remember. If you're just making a generic for loop, go ahead and use i. And of course, always start it at zero unless you have an explicit reason not to. Then we have our uh, condition, and I'm going to say less than 100 because I want to do this 100 times. And then last but not least, we increment i by 1 with i++. So we could see out i here. And this is going to count to 100. We know that. We'll go ahead and do it. Uh, but we've seen this a million times. There we go. It counts to 100. Now, what if we want to count by twos? What if we want to count from 0 to 100 and we only want to count every other one? Well, we could we could here, we could say i equals i plus 2. But there's an easier way. Just like there was an i plus plus, there's something for the other numbers. What if we want to say i equals i plus 2? We say plus equals Two. And that's going to do the same thing. We could even say plus equals 3, plus equals 4. There's also a minus equals 4. There's even a times equals 4 and a divided equals 4. Anytime you have an operator and then an equals sign like this, what that means is take my current value, then multiply it by 4 and add it back onto itself or something like that, or add it to 4. So if we do plus equals 2, we're going to get every single number from 0 to 100 that is uh, divisible by 2. So it's going to go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, just like that. What if we want to print all powers of 2? Well, we need to start at 1 because 0 times 2 is always 0. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say i times equals 2. So what's, what it's going to be is it's going to be 1 times 2, then we go through again, times 2, then we go through again, and we keep going. And it's only going to happen a few times, because the powers of 2 blow up really, really quick. See, we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Really, really quick blow up with powers of 2. But see, you can do lots of really cool stuff uh, that's that's really easy uh, with this little operator here, with the times equals or the minus equals, or 
or the plus equals is one you're going to use a whole lot. So that's for loops. That's our little review of for loops. What about while loops? Well, t when I'm going to teach you about uh, the, the while loops, let's also go back and talk about Booleans. So the Boolean variable that I was going to teach you starts out with B-O-O-L, and then you just type your variable name. So we could say is game over or something like that. And what a Boolean variable stores is it stores a true or false value. Just like a Boolean expression returns true or false, a Boolean variable holds true or false. So is our game over? No, we'll say it's not over. And typically you're going to use Booleans like this, which you could call a flag. We're going to use it in a while loop. So we could say, here's our game loop. And we're going to we're going to do a while loop here. We're going to say while and we'll say while is game over is equal to false. So while our game is not over, we're going to do stuff in here. Do game things. Okay? Got an email. So here is our game loop. We could do lots of game stuff in here. And then later, the user could say, oh, I quit. I'm going to hit the X button or whatever. I'm going to type quit. And then we could set is game over equals true. And then since is game over is true, this statement is going to evaluate to false because true is not equal to false. And this is going to end. So Booleans are typically used as like a flag. While loops a lot of times are going to have a Boolean variable right here. If you're counting, you use a for loop. If you're trying to check if the game is over or something, you use a while loop. Or you could use a do while loop. Uh, I'm not going to review do while loops because you know you, you don't really need them that much. So this has been your review of for loops and boolean.